Sunday and it is now seven in the morning and I am getting ready to leave to go to church. Uh, we are only doing one service for church because of the coronavirus and hosting online churches. So we are doing it. We're doing the things. Now I'm just going to finish getting ready. Probably have some coffee, maybe eat something, and uh, we'll be heading out to Chisgurch. Now to find my husband, who's probably studying. What are you doing here? He's studying. He's bringing the tithes and offering today. <laughs> We're leaving our kids home because we just feel more comfortable leaving them home at the moment. This finishes up my morning drink. COVID-19 and so church has been structured not too different just one service um, not so many people serving and that's okay um, been uh, a different time a different season during this whole thing and I think lots of people are being affected and we just pray for everybody right now in this time of of whatever this is going on. <laughs> to meet we hang out here at the glass table and we're just preparing and waiting for everyone to show up for meeting all of our people are showing up for prayer and to get ready for the message and it's gonna be a fantastic Sunday all the all the all the letters that he wrote in scriptures that we stand firm with Isn't that awesome that's awesome yeah it was powerful servants who drew the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after. The guests have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best till now. Just hanging out, just prepping dinner. I'm making a chocolate. This. Godiva Molten Lava Cake. So I'm just mixing this and then I'm gonna be prepping dinner. We're gonna have potatoes with green beans and uh, chicken, apple chicken sausage. It's gonna be yummy.
good. My kids, I think they know. I think my kids know I'm making this. I bought it without telling them. And so I'm sure they like low key know that it's sitting in there and they're probably like, maybe today she'll make it. And today is the day. So they're out with dad picking up supplies. So I'm just prepping here so that way we can eat and enjoy dinner tonight. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be super scrumptious. <laughs> I just had guests come to my door to sing Jingle Bells at 7 o'clock at night in, what month are we in? Because all this corona crap has me confused. March, and it brought me joy, and it was beautiful. So you know who you are. Thank you. Jingle Bells to you, too. Corona life sanitizer. That's the dice while you're at it here. These dice are clean. Wow. <laughs> you think that's serious? Seven. Let's go because it gets you out. You tried. <laughs> Okay, on this particular day, I was kind of sorting through my laundry, getting prepared for the week to come. I like to sort all my laundry out and wash all of our linens and have them fresh every single week. I separate darks and the good shirts that need to be hung up on hangers, and I also make sure that I separate the good shirts with the bad shirts and you know the kind of the pajama shirts and things of that nature so anyways I have a really specific system that I like to use I also really think it's super important to make your bed every single morning it's the first pretty much the first feeling of success when you wake up in the morning so I have always found that to be absolutely important For about two and a half years now, I've been practicing gratitude in the mornings. Um, I usually start off my morning, if I'm not doing it in reverse, cleaning first. I get into the Word, read some scriptures, um, and I just kind of highlight what pops out to me in that very moment. Um, I then move on to my daily gratitude, um, which is from Rachel Hollis. Um, she has been a huge mentor for me in this time of season of my life, and I am extremely grateful for the system that she has created. Um, it is basically writing five gratitudes and doing your daily five, and also writing down your goals as if they have already happened. So you write about 10 all together, and then you write the number one goal that you're striving for at the moment. So the cool thing is that I actually have uh, reached one of my goals inside of my Start Today journal. And there I am realizing, yeah, I did that. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I start off my morning. I think it's very important to remember um, all the good things that happened the day before and uh, recognizing that there's still good ahead in the new day that you are starting. So that is my morning routine at my desk every morning. I have started writing down a scripture or a quote of the day and for this particular day it was 
what do I know of these things, especially because of everything going on today with the COVID-19. Um, this was kind of my like mentality is like, I don't know. And God is in complete control. I write down my to do for the day and I try my best to achieve um, at least about three to four and they can be really small or they can be really big. So I try to be really intentional. I am currently in a next 90 day challenge. So I'm writing three of my goals down and uh, yeah, so far so good. Okay, so every morning on our way to work slash church, because I work at a church, we work at a church, the boys do school work there because we homeschool anywhere we go. We can do it at the beach, we can do it in the park, usually we're at church. But we read our devotional in the morning by Sarah Young, Jesus Always. We sometimes read scripture, and then sometimes if I have time, I read from my high performance habits book and then we also make sure that we find out what the flavor of the day is at culver's what's the flavor of the day chocolate eclair. chocolate eclair that's an interesting one so uh isaac has a new book today right mm -hmm. what's your new book it's called peak peak and it is a fiction book fiction what does that mean that it's fake that it's fake yes cool gabriel what book are you reading Got a new book too. I don't know what it's called. A diamond check. Hey, what book are you reading? I am reading Acres of Diamonds by Jensen Franklin. Nice. Well, well this is fiction means all the names and characters, organization and events portrayed in this book are products of the author's imagination. Nice. And the time. The what? The time bike. What do you think it's about? Mm -hmm. Time machine, not a bike. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. <laughs> so, anyways, this is our morning routine on our way to church, and um, and it's it's pretty full. We try to make sure that we fill it up with Jesus first and some knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Because readers are what leaders. Leaders. leaders that's right. <laughs> Welcome to my Tuesday. I usually walk right in, put my books down, and I open up my blinds. I love natural light, and even though the sun doesn't really come in very well through these windows, it's still nice knowing that the sun is outside <laughs> um, and it somewhat peeks through. So in this particular day, I'm just kind of getting started. It's a Tuesday, which is when my work week starts at church, and I usually start my computer because she's a little slow in the morning. And then I get kind of organized, clean up my area, 
try my best to create a space where I'm like, okay, I know I need to have my backpack ready for meeting, which has my computer, um, because of the whole COVID-19. Not that I don't wipe my desk down on a regular basis, but I just felt like everything needed to be extra cleaned this day. So uh, my desk is a desk that my husband made for me with reusable desk pieces from an office space that we found. And I will probably share that maybe another time in another video on how my office came about by a vision that I had found on Pinterest. And um, we're actually gonna be re modeling, repurposing my office because my husband is moving into my office with me. It's a pretty big space. But anyways, back to the point. Cleaning my office, telling my children to clean their office. In case some of you don't know, I homeschool my children. Um, what I love most about my job is that they can come with me. So they get to learn and be educated with their school stuff, but then also learn what it's like to serve and be a part of a community of people who love God and serve God. So. I am wiping everything down because at that particular day I was a little nervous about the coronavirus. It was very fresh, very new, and um, I was trying to really work my faith. And let's just say today I'm a whole different woman. I have no fear and I know that I have a hedge of protection over me and my home. So just kind of organizing. For some reason, um, as the secretary of the office, everything comes in my office. I have tried to avoid that at all costs. but. Yeah, look, even that bucket. Why? Why does it exist? But it's still there. I don't know. Maybe it will show its purpose one day in my office space. But yes, that green plant in the corner, that's exciting for me because I am, do not have a green thumb whatsoever. My mother-in-law gave that to me as a gift. She planted it for me and um, kept it alive for a while to make sure that it would last. And I have kept it around since Christmas. So there she is, all beautiful and vibrant. And she is still growing like crazy. And my goal is to put her in the corner and hang her up so she can kind of um, oxygenate my atmosphere. <laughs> You're welcome. Fill up my water bottle, child, so I can plant my, my uh, or water my plants. That's what I was telling my youngest. So that's what I'm doing. I do that once a week because I don't want to overwater them and I had to learn that the hard way everyone. So here is my other little baby. Isn't she cute? Look at her. I'm just going to pull some of the old dead leaves out and look at my kid like, oh, are you recording? Yes, I am, child. <laughs> it's all new for them. I used to vlog back in the day, so they're kind of aware of it, but something we started new. So um, yeah, so I usually just use about a half a water bottle each um, and I try my best not to overwater them. My husband usually checks up on them. See, there he is, like clockwork. <laughs> so yeah, that's me just checking in on my plants. All right, every morning I come in and I make coffee for everyone here. I turn on the coffee machine, I go down and I pick out the filter and our good old coffee. So I just kind of prep the coffee, get it ready, so that way people can feel caffeinated while they're working. <laughs> so um, I just kind of get that started and uh, a few other things that I get done in the day before everybody shows up to the office. I also make sure that I put any dishes away that were left from the weekend uh, Sunday service from the coffee uh, welcome center team and make sure that that's all taken care of. Every morning, or at least twice a week at 
max. I always either write a scripture or I write a quote of the day for the office. I just think it's important to keep office morale up and something engaging to interact with was people walk in for our Tuesday meeting and uh, I don't remember what I actually wrote on this day and it's actually very hard to read from here but it did come out of my morning devotional so uh, yeah that's all right once I get situated I come into my office probably scream back and forth with my husband about things that I'm needing to get done for the day also homeschooling your kids you know they're in my husband's current office at the moment, um, but soon they'll be in mine. But yeah, so we usually just go back and forth. Here I'm actually preparing for Holy Week, but it was actually a journey to Easter. We had Easter coming around the corner, so I was getting all the preparations ready for all of our leaders to go live every day at 7 p.m. for an entire week. And that actually ended up being amazing and our people loved it, especially since a lot of them are not meeting in our congregation physically at the moment. So it's a good week. So this is where I'm going to end the video. Tuesdays is our date night for me and my husband and we usually go out to eat for sushi but unfortunately no one can go out to eat at the moment. So we ordered takeout and it was amazing. We love a local place called Umami's and so a lot has happened since this vlog and I can go on and on but you know times are kind of unique. I'm going to end it here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This was a long one. If you made it to the end, kudos to you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. And until the next video, God bless you and have a great, great rest of the week. Peace out.